And uh, Tricia, why don't you share uh, now what the Lord's speaking to you about this year? Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you, Patricia, for having me on. I honor you and I bless you and everybody else who's on this call. Um, I, I agree with what everyone has been saying, but I want to start off with a dream I had uh, two nights ago, and it was a crazy dream. I was on this enormous roller coaster, and there were many different people on this roller coaster from different streams. And I was on the front cart, and Ann Tate, who is uh, an apostle of intercession at Chuck's church, was sitting in the front cart with me. And as I looked down, it was such a steep decline that I, I kind of freaked out. And I, and I raised my hand to the conductor, who I knew was the Lord in a dream, and said, I, I want to get off this thing. I have to go to the bathroom. And I said it twice, and he said, sit down, hold tight, and trust me. And so in the dream, I mean, it's, it, to me, it's a no-brainer, but I just couldn't get this dream out of my mind. He said, obviously, I mean, you all have said it. We, we are coming in to, we think we had some tumultuous times in the past. There, there's a lot of shaking going on, you know? And I was thinking about a roller coaster. There's a lot of turns and steep slopes and ups and downs. And, you know, I knew the Lord was saying to me, hold on tight. And, um, you know, Ann Tate sitting in the front with me, I'm an intercessor, Ann's an intercessor. We have got to be in that intimate place with the Lord more than ever, right? I mean, we've all said that, you know, in 2019, right before COVID hit, the word of the Lord that we were given, you know, the Lord was saying to us that we have got to rebuild our altar of intimacy. You know, Chuck wrote a book about that. And many have been talking about that because I said, we have got to prepare for what's coming. And if you do not hear what the word of the Lord is, what the voice of God is saying, we're going to be up a creek here. And so God wants us to have those intimate encounters with him, but God is also going to require us to do uh, things, uncomfortable things that we have not done before. We're going to have to step yeah. out in a way that we've never done before. And that, uh, and it's going to be very uncomfortable, whatever our situation is. But, but see, again, God is saying this, hold on tight. He's saying, because I've got you and I have your back. But see, I also believe that the promises that we've been standing on, the Lord's breaking through in 2022. I did get the word about keys and that the Lord is unlocking doors and things that have been slammed shut. God says, and this time he's opening those doors up and not to back down and not to give up because we've been weary and well-doing. There's been a lot of battle fatigue, but I heard the Lord and I saw, and I saw this once before. He says, I'm giving my people mouth to mouth resuscitation. I'm breathing my breath. I'm, I'm causing your spiritual immune system to rise up and, and have the breath of God upon us. And, and that, and and I just am so grateful for that. And you know, one of the things that I thought was interesting in the dream for me, I really consider myself a woman of faith. And God has done amazing things in my life. But I wanted to get out of that car. I didn't want to stay in that thing because I didn't want to go down that that steep incline. I, I hate that feeling, you know. And I was, and the Lord said, we have got to be careful about our emotions in this season, not allowing our opinions. Like it says in Proverbs 3, 5, says, trust in the Lord completely and do not rely upon your opinions or your emotions to be uh, to dictate to us in this season. And I mean, it should never be. But, you know, Lord knows we've been allowing that stuff happening in the body of Christ. And, and the Lord said to me, he says, your emotions was going to was totally trying to derail you when I am going to keep you on track on that roller coaster. I'm going to keep you on track. And you have to trust me, even though you were afraid. And so um, what I felt like the Lord said to me was, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of things in the word. I'm saved a long time, but don't allow our familiarity, you know, guide us or control yeah. us. In other words, we have to have that. As, and we all know this stuff, fresh manna every day. And so, you know, again, that comes with our intimacy with him. And so in, in Isaiah 41, 10, I want to read this to you because I feel aligned with my, my dream and in passion. It says, don't yield to fear. I mean, my Lord, look at what's been going on with this fear pandemic. And, you know, I used to really struggle with fear and I, I get fear. But God says, don't yield to it. Don't be distracted by fear. We have to have our eyes fixed upon the Lord and focus. It says, don't yield to fear for I'm always near. Never turn your gaze from me, for I'm your faithful God. I will infuse you with my strength and help you in every situation, and I'll hold you firmly with my victorious right hand. Remember, he said, hold on. 
And I believe God's hand is on our hand as we're holding on tight. Mm -hmm. God has his hand upon us and he's not going to allow us to get off track as we're intimate with him. So, you know, we, we face a lot of things when we're, when we're in that tight situation, it's easy to get caught up in our emotions. And I really felt like the Lord said, he said, listen, in this time in the church, I'm speaking to the Ecclesia, God, he said to me, I'm going to visit the church. And I don't know how any other way to say, it, but with a violent spirit, he said, I'm going to address the religious mindsets and I'm going to I'm in the traditions that have tried to hold us in a place that's not allowing for a breakthrough because it is the church that's going to bring the shift to the nations. I believe that with all my heart and that. And so I cried out to the Lord and I said, Lord, search my heart. Because I don't want to act like I'm the only one. I get I get whatever the Lord is saying. No, I want him to look introspectively in that when we're in that intimate place, he, Holy Spirit wants to show us what's going on. And I don't want to have a know-it-all attitude. The Bible says a wise man or woman has a teachable spirit, right? So the Lord, this is what the Lord said to me. He said, I'm going to search hearts. And he said, and whatever we have been going to that's giving us ca uh, comfort, like a counterfeit affection, security apart from God is going to be tested and shaken. And that, um, you know, we have to make Jesus our go-to. Listen, I'm saved a long time. And I know that we all know that. But how many times when we're in the midst of a pandemic or COVID or crazy situations, we're hearing about Afghanistan, you know, or sometimes we can tend to run to other things rather than into the face of God. So I just want to encourage people with that because the wind of his presence is going to up uproot everything that needs to be uprooted. And the Lord said to me, we really are coming back to a time of where the church will truly walk in the fear of God, not the fear of man. And that comes again from our, our from our, um, you know, our uh, intimate time with him. So we're not going to allow the enemy to interpret our impossible situations, but we're going to keep our eyes fixed on him. And then the other thing that the Lord said, we had started a fast in August and I didn't realize what uh, 5782 meant about the house of bet. For fasting for our families, the Lord said that there was going to be a family awakening, a family revival, family anointing, and that the promises that we've been standing on forever for family members, the Lord says, now is the breakthrough. Do not give up. And I want to read this scripture that I absolutely love. Well, you know, Nehemiah 4, it says that we have to fight for our family, right? Don't give up. Don't, don't, don't be in a place of bitterness or resentment. God is restoring. He's bringing reconciliation and healing. But I love this scripture in Jeremiah 31. Thus says the Lord, restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears for your work will be rewarded, says the Lord, and your children shall return from the enemy's land. And there is hope in your future, says the Lord, and your children shall come back to their own country. That is a word. I want to encourage people stand firm because we've been hearing and we've been seeing things shift in people's lives. And then lastly, what the Lord said to me was uh, he's raising up his Gideon 300 army, right? In 1999, the Lord said that to me. And he said, Tricia, you're going to be a part of this. I want you to raise up a, a Gideon 300 army. And it was, it just never panned out. It's for now. God is raising and he's refiring his army. He's refreshing his army. And I've shared this before. I had a, a vision um, of an underground warring tribe, that that a, a remnant that God has been preserving for such a time as this. There are more for us than against us. The Lord is raising up people that will re that's in recovery that 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 won't look to the left nor to the right. But God is is really moving on on our behalf. And listen to this. And this is what I felt like for me that the Lord said. This is one of my scriptures uh, in Psalm 105:24, and it amplified. It says. There the Lord greatly increased the number of his people and made them more powerful than his enemies. That's what God is doing. He is developing us. You know, when he comes back, is he going to come? Is he going to find faith? The Bible says the just shall live by faith. We heard that from Chuck and Troy. We are going to uh, be a people of faith. That's the currency of heaven. And so I'll close with this. The Lord says in Isaiah 42, 13, the Lord will go forth like a warrior and he will stir up his zeal like a man of war. He will shout out. Yes, he will raise a war cry. He's raising this war cry over his people and he will prevail mightily against his enemies. So. I really believe that God is saying to us, sit down, rest in me, hold tight. 
You know, he's saying, don't, you know, trust me, trust me in everything that you're going through. I am going to be shaking things, but I've got your back. And this is just going to be the most amazing adventure that we ever, yet that I feel that we've ever been on. There are going to be many coming to the Lord. There are going to be many that lives are going to be transformed. And I do believe deliverance is going to really be key in this end time season because they're going to need it. And they need to know our love and, you know, mercy triumphs over judgment. And we're to walk in that compassion of God. So that's what I wanted to share. I, I just know that that dream really kind of shook me because I hate being on roller coasters, you know, and the Lord said to us that, you know, the thing that we try to control, God says, uh-uh, honey, you're going to go on this thing and you're going to let me guide the tr you on that track. And I'm going to allow you to have fun in the midst of the shaking. So I just want to encourage you with that word. Thank you so much, Tricia. 